it's a style of work in our lab that we, uh, beyond uh, just one mainstream direction, one mainstream type of experiments, we also do a number of those so-called Friday evening experiments. You probably might recall the Gecko tape. The uh, Andre Geim is quite well known for his frog levitation and graphene w came out as one of those Friday evening experiments as well. The, the original question was, can we make a transistor out of graphite? There were quite a few uh, 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 unsuccessful experiments, but then one did work and after that uh, we, we know that th this is something really interesting and we started to develop it. Uh, well, yes, uh, that's uh, exactly what what we did use. I said that there are there were quite a few other attempts which which didn't work. And for instance, um, uh, Andre Geim asked one of his PhD students to uh, polish a very expensive piece of graphite into very thin platelets. And this Chinese guy, he took this expensive piece walk away one week after he comes back with a pile of uh, dust asking do you have more graphite so at that at that time we thought that probably that's the time to uh, drop it off completely and then a few weeks after i saw how another colleague of ours uh, is cleaning his graphite to to study the the, the surface in uh, STM experiments, and, and then I immediately thought that yes, that 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 must be it. Uh, we, I, I simply picked up this uh, piece of scotch tape from the from the dustbin and made made uh, a first transistor out of it. And th that very first sample did work immediately. And I, and I should say, although there are quite a few number of methods which are which exist now to make mass production of, of, of graphene. The scotch tape method is still being used quite widely in many labs uh, across the world. I think that's the right uh, scientific style to show, to share the results openly with, uh, with, with other labs. But there is also a bit of pragmatic thing here because it was quite clear from the very beginning that graphene is a bit more than simple uh, nice new material which you might want to study for, for a few months. It was quite clear that this, this material is really something new and it's, uh, it, it will be here for a very long time. And it's, uh, you can see it now that even after what, seven, eight years of studying it, we still don't know uh, to, we, we, there are still quite a few questions left, although it's, it's been attacked from, the, from many different perspectives. So, uh, it, so sharing it uh, with, with other people was exactly the right strategy because we learned a lot from, that, from this collaboration and uh, I think it, it was the, the right move from the very beginning. There are a number of properties which are special. Uh, of course, uh, for me, the electronic properties are the most interesting because electrons behave as massless relativistic particles, and we never had this concept before. It's like uh, CERN on, on, on your desk. You can, uh, uh, you can study quasi-relativistic phenomena in your samples, and we never had this in our, in our possession. Then, of course, mechanical properties is the strongest material on Earth, so it's, uh, it's, it's very appealing I immediately. But probably most important is that uh, it, this is the, the material, one material, which combines all those properties in one. It conducts electricity better than copper, it's stronger than diamond, it's more untransparent than many other materials more impermeable to any gases than any, any other membrane. So in, in one material we have all those, all those superlatives and we never had it in any other material before. Right, it's, it's just traditionally because 
the first people on the scene were physicists, we see more happening in physics, but I really think that this material can offer much more in other areas of science. Chemistry is really a rich place where we can see a lot of things happening with, with graphene in the future. Uh, if you think about it, it's just surface without bulk. So anything you do on the surface you do for the wall crystal, already now we have a couple of examples of chemically modified graphene. We, have, we can put hydrogen on top of graphene and it will make uh, graphene or we can put fluorine and we can make fluorographene if you want two-dimensional Teflon and the opportunities here are practically endless because you can put other species on, on, on top of this material and you can, you can change the mechanical, the chemical, the electronic, the optical uh, properties of the resulting two-dimensional two crystal. Um, biology is another area where we can expect uh, lots of things happening Obviously, already now we see things developing uh, in terms of drug delivery, stem cell research, and so on, but it's really an unexplored area. It starts to be fashionable now, and um, uh, people start to look at other two-dimensional crystals more and more, and uh, even we start to go even beyond that. We start to combine different uh, two-dimensional crystals into one three-dimensional heterostructure, and those p possess really unbelievably interesting properties b b by themselves. So I think that, that that will be at the top of the agenda for the next uh, five, seven years. Yeah, that's a very interesting concept and uh, I think 90% of the efforts in this lab are now oriented on those. Um, imagine that we had graphene and then we went to other two-dimensional two crystals, so we had those two-dimensional layers. But now, in principle, it is in our power to put one on top of another. The question is, what would be the property of this sandwich? And then we can we can add the third one and the fourth and and the, and more and more and more, and the properties of those sandwiches would be really complicated. But you can also take a look at it from a different perspective. What we had so far in our say electronic industry, we used we used silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, sometimes heterostructure, but basically we worked with the materials which are given to us by nature and we worked with the materials which are with the properties of those materials which are given to us by, by, by nature and set by nature when we combine those two dimensional crystals we basically create new material with new properties and we we can design those properties at our at our wish we can put one layer which is conductive, another layer which is superconductive, next layer which is ferromagnetic, next one which is insulating and so on and so on. Basically you come to me and uh, you tell me what kind of properties do you want from your material and I can create a material like this for you within a within few hours. It's, if you wish, another name for this, for this concept is material on demand. You tell me the, the, the properties you want, I will I will design a material which doesn't exist in nature, but it exists in our, in our lab. That would be tough, but it, it would also be very interesting. And if you think about, say, graphene, uh, even three years ago, if you would ask me, would it be used for any applications, I would be more skeptical and would say that, well, probably we need to wait for another 10 years. Uh, but, the enor but the progress in terms of mass production of graphene was huge. We really, we went, within a couple of years, we passed this, this uh, stage of peeling flakes with scotch tape to producing square meters, even larger pieces of, 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 of graphene. We see the same process with heterostructures. The best heterostructures are still produced by hands, 
but uh, already now we see efforts in making those heterostructures by CVD growth and I'm sure that this area of research will be the dominant in the next uh, uh, two, three years. I think we are only in the beginning of the, of the process. Physics is more or less being researched, but we also we are only uh, we are only starting. The most interesting thing is when we study the combination of different properties, say how the mechanical properties influence the electronic properties or optical properties, and that hasn't been studied much yet. And in terms of chemistry and uh, optics and uh, and other properties of, of these materials, we just we haven't even touched that. That would be our dream. That's uh, indeed what we see now is that graphene is is replacing other materials in the existing applications, and that uh, that's already quite good because. Graphene, very often, it, it offers superior properties, say in terms of conductivity or transparency, it, it replaces ITO, and then it, it replaces, say, carbon fibers or carbon nanotubes in composite materials. It does it does its job, and it does it it does this job very well. But really, our dream would be to see specific uh, applications designed for graphene because this material offers m much more it, it it offers a combination of unique properties and this combination has never been seen in any other materials before